Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your August 16th to the 31st, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification. Now before we dive into this reading, Let's clear the energy space, raising our energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all energy from your body like storm clouds, feeling yourself secure, stabilized and at peace as you embrace and enter into the safe, calm space. All right, let's see what the tarot has to say. And I want to thank you all so very much. This is my first ever Baba Studios tarot deck, and it would not be possible without your generosity. So thank you so much for this. It's an absolute treat. These cards have amazing energy. So let's see now. Capricorn. August 16th to the 31st, 2020 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 Capricorn. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Oh, goodness, show me clearly. And one bonus card. And let's see what your chakra has to say for this time. Your chakra energy. Capricorn, August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn. August 16th to the 31st. 2020 Capricorn, August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, ooh, fantastic, one, two, three, four, that's brilliant, so you have very strong chakra energy, which I really feel that you're utilizing for your very best, right here we have communication, this is the throat chakra, all right, and this is, this is your superpower during this time to be able to pick up on every nuance, every 
word that is said and not said, every facial expression, every thought, every, you know, rise and fall of the energy in the room. Will it be overwhelming? Yeah, it really can be. Will it be powerful and useful for you? Yes, it will. If you can kind of step back and it's not completely disjointedly take in the energy that is around you, but it's not be emotionally impacted by the ebb and flow of people and by the baggage that they bring to the table, you can be highly successful and highly intuitively powerful during this time. Right. And then we have psychic development, which makes perfect sense with the power of communicative powers that you, that you have here, with the power of your communication. Now the psychic development means, now this is the third eye chakra, and this means that you're really seeing things so much more than they present themselves at the time. And what you're looking at and what you're defining and what you are embracing is a path of truth for yourself. And you're seeing things kind of unfold. You're seeing a bigger picture. Your intuition is beyond sky high. For some of you, you're going to need to ask spirit, your angels, to step back. You know, not step back, but hold things back just a little bit because you're getting too much. And it will be overwhelming and it will be overpowering. Now, you might be worried that if you turn up this gift, it'll never come again. Take it from me as somebody who said, no, I, I don't want this. When I first discovered it, when I was very young and somebody of very great renown told me that this was my path, it does come back. You can't ignore, well, you can, but you can't ignore with any sort of happiness the path that you are supposed to walk. And so here, no matter where you are in your journey and what you are ready for, your psychic development is enhancing, your intuition is powerful, and you are really finding a way and utilizing this. This then leads you to spiritual awakening, which is your crown chakra. And this is you understanding more. This is you seeing so much more. This is very much high priestess energy that is around you. It's like the veil is lifted from your eyes. It's embracing your psychic development. It's embracing your communicative powers. It's embracing you. And you are going to find yourself very awakened, very empowered. You can find that there's a lot of heated energy at the crown of your head, pooling also in, I'm feeling, in the palms of your hands, and a bit of a tingle at the, at the bottom of your feet. Now, if it's like pins and needles, tingly, go see somebody. But this is a warm, very soothing, tingly sensation. It's actually very pleasant. And then we have inner strength, which is the solar plexus chakra. And this is you breaking out of your shell. This is you embracing a strength that you might have never known you had. And it's powerful and it's truthful and it is where you've always wanted to stand but thought, oh no, I can't. Now you're seeing, oh yes, I can. And you are opening yourself up. This is your gut being very powerful. So listen to your gut. Listen to your intuition. You're really on point during this time. Also be very mindful of the foods that you eat and the drinks that you drink because, yeah, because it's going to have, it's going to hit your stomach harder than it usually does. Now the left-hand side of the tarot, this is your inner self. The middle is your emotional, your heart self. And the right-hand side is your, your public self, the public arena. So let's see what they have to say. We start off with the death card. This is a Scorpio energy, a time frame of October 23rd to November 21st. This is the great equalizer. And you are seeing things making a lot more sense. And being a lot more level for you. It's kind of like, oh, I understand why. Like, I'm seeing the bigger picture. And this then also leads you to a dying away of the old self, a rebirth of the new, a power of being reborn, and a passion of being reborn. Then we have the Ten of Wands. You're letting go of a lot of baggage that you've been carrying. You're also letting go of... Yeah, you're letting go of a lot that you have been carrying for everybody else. It's kind of like, if I eat their load, things will be better, life will be better. And now you're sitting there and saying, you know what, some people have to learn their own lessons. They have to find their own truth. This then leads you to the devil, which is, of course, you in the major arcana. And this is the very essence of you shining through as you release a lot of the burdens that you've been carrying. And it leads you 
to the Minor Arcana Lovers card, the Two of Cups. It leads you to joy and beauty and love and healing, which is absolutely amazing. Which then brings you to your emotional self and your crown with the lovers. So your heart is filled with love. Your heart is filled with beauty and acceptance of self and power of intuition and understanding. <coughs> Excuse me. It also ha You also have a duality of spirit. And you're working very hard to move forward in the place that you want to be, in the prosperity that you want from your life, in, a, in an emotional abundance that makes you feel like it really is worth it. Because sometimes we get caught up in the rat race and what everybody else thinks is important. And it just feels like we're going through the motions without the joy, the passion, the brilliance in life. And you're embracing the, the brilliance. We have the Five of Swords. It's karmic. It is karmic. A lot of things that you are facing right now, a lot of things that really let the true essence of you shine is because you're facing karmic, karmic debts that have impacted your heart. Now, this can be from past lives. This could be from traumas and dramas that you have inherited through your DNA. And what you're doing here is you're setting yourself free. You really are. You are standing in your power. You are standing up for yourself. You're standing in your glory. And you're not backing down. And you're not letting others take advantage of you. It leads you to temperance, which is a Sagittarius energy, November 22nd to December 21st. This is balance, harmony, and a real coming together of yourself, of what you desire, and where it is that you want to be. It leads you then to the Eight of Wands. Now, the repeat of the number eight means that this is a very dedicated, very intense time for you. You're taking things astoundingly seriously. The sacred feminine is around you, so there is a sense of a warm, kind of loving, mothering, beautiful touch. It's very much, you know, yeah, it's very much the female deities within the world. So I'm seeing here very strong images of the Virgin Mary and Kuan Yin and just those aspects of caring and nurturing and, and beauty stepping into your life. And here things are moving a lot more quickly than you had expected. And it's kind of like you almost feel as if you're along for the ride. It's opening you up to a new world, a new passion, a new power. And it's very interesting that then you have the hermit. Because as everything is changing, right, and you feel it, you feel it intensely and immensely, the hermit comes in and says, I'm really guarding what's important to me. So as things are changing, people might see you as being a bit more reserved, a bit more kind of into yourself and what you desire and where it is that you want to be. And they might be thinking, why? And it's because you really are protecting what's absolutely positively priceless for you. And you are being guided forward by this exuberant light of truth and of bounty and of your soul's wishes. Now, the Hermit card is also representative of a Virgo energy, a time frame of August 23rd to September 22nd. It then leads you to the Nine of Swords. Now, this is the repeat of the number nine right here with Virgo, with the Hermit, and with the Nine of Swords. So you're coming very close to a completion of a cycle, and you are absolutely feeling this. The Nine of Swords are doubts and our fears, our fears, there we go. And it's a sense of, am I doing this the right way? It's being kept up at night. It's being worried. It's, you know, overthinking, overanalyzing. And then we have the Ace of Wands. This is passion. This is beauty. This is a gift from God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, that opens up doors, that moves you forward in a really exquisite way. And you are most definitely taking this gift because you have the Queen of Wands right here. This is a fire sign energy in Aries, a Leo, a Sagittarius. Now, if you are born on the cusp, right, the beginning of the Capricorn time frame, the cusp of Sagittarius, this energy is going to be highly intense for you. Also, if you have a lot of fire sign within your chart, there is a sense of creation. There is a sense of really looking at your life purpose. This is powerful for each and every one of you Capricorns. But just know if you have fire sign within your chart or if you are a cusp baby, this is even more powerful. And this is coming to the table with intensity and with a sense of, of vigor and determination and dedication. And so the doors are really opening for you in a powerful and meaningful way. This is focusing on the energy that gets you out of bed in the morning. This is focusing on the energy that makes you feel just 
on fire and excited and brilliant with life. So this is really quite amazing and something Capricorn that you absolutely want to utilize and embrace to its highest. So let's see here, who are the people who are going to aid you during this time? Who are the people that will aid Capricorn August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn? Who are the people that will aid Capricorn August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Oh, fantastic. Four. So we have here the King of Cups. This is a water sign energy, a Pisces, a Scorpio, a Cancer. This is also very much a person who knows that they are ruling their own lives and only their own lives. So this is someone who, who sees themselves and who knows that they are the king or the queen of their own self. It doesn't, well, they come across as the king. So they come across as very powerful, a bit weighed down by responsibilities. They cannot move as freely. Think of a queen in chess can move much more freely across the board than a king. This is somebody who could very well have a very big dog as a very loyal companion in their lives. This does not have to be, and none of these people who aid you have to be people that you, that you know. These can be people who inspire you in one way or another. This is somebody who is very in tune with their emotions, who has a very deep and very giving heart. And this is something that you are absolutely drawn to. This is also somebody who looks at looks at the fact that the only person that you can control within your life is yourself. That's it. Other people you might have more say over than others, but when it comes to our kingdoms on earth, it is, it is one. And so here you are moving forward in that power, in that compassion, and this person really helps you see that and utilize that power. Now let's see here the next person is the King of Pentacles. This is, oh goodness, hold on one moment. There we go. This is an earth sign energy, a Taurus, a Virgo, a Capricorn. This is somebody who is very dedicated to the bigger picture, how things are connected and how things correlate and really looking at, at the way their seeds are planted. So with the earth sign energy and with the King of, of Pentacles, he looks at what harvest he wants to reap and the way it will impact every single aspect of his kingdom. And that's what this person helps you see, the interconnected aspects of life and the prosperity and passion that is intertwined with them. This then leads you to the Princess of Pentacles. This is somebody who is learning. This is somebody who is highly creative, right? and who is very dedicated and has the sense of a beautiful way of seeing connections. This person does not act quickly. This is very likely a feminine, this is a feminine energy. It doesn't mean that they have to be a feminine person, but this is a person who sees and cultivates and looks at, at the details and takes things astoundingly seriously. I'm just seeing this as being the type of person who would throw a really good dinner party. And I know that sounds really weird, but I keep on seeing, you know, China laid out. And just like the attention to detail is amazing. And that's what this person is all about. The attention to detail that makes people feel comfortable, relaxed, and at peace. And that is going to be something that you really take away from this person. The way that they have a richness and a lushness to life that absolutely inspires you. And then we have the Prince of Pentacles. So again, Earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. This is somebody who moves slowly and steadily in their prosperity, to their bounty, and to where they want to be in life. This is somebody who believes that setting a solid foundation is the best way to move forward. And this is somebody who is absolutely dedicated to what they desire. This leads you then to a, lever a leveling of a playing field. Now it can be that the bones of the past right, are being conquered. 
things that have happened, things that have laid waste, things that have made you doubt or fear or feel overwhelmed, you are seeing that it is equalizing. You're not going to be led by this fear anymore. You're not going to be defined by this. You are defined by something greater. And this is a sense of your purpose, a sense of your power, a sense of diving deeply within the emotions of what you want and where it is that you want to be. Again, this is a time frame of October 23rd to November 21st. And this is a sense of seeing the way that you move forward, being reborn, st re being reborn, stepping out of the shadow of others or the shadow of contemplation of self. And as you do so, here you move to the Ten of Swords, the t not the Ten of Swords, the Ten of Wands. And it's a sense of, well, the Ten of Swords comes in because it is lessons learned. And I'm kind of seeing the Ten of Wands and the Ten of Swords as intertwining here, which is very interesting, the image that Spirit is giving. Because the Ten of Wands is a burden that is being carried. And it can be, you know, picking up more burdens, picking up more to build that solid foundation, to build exactly what it is that you want. But there is also a sense here of doubts and fears and overthinking and overanalyzing. And you have a tendency to do this to yourself. And it's not a bad thing at all. It's that you want to lay such a solid foundation that you are going to look at every single aspect of the way that you have moved forward. And you are going to be hypercritical of every single decision that you have made that has either helped you move forward to where it is that you want to be or hindered you. This can be paralyzing. So know that as you are moving forward in your passion and in your power, in your ideas and in your contemplation, do not be too hard on yourself. Also, as you are moving forward, you are going to want to, lead, you're going to, want to ease the load from others. You're going to want to take away their burdens, their doubts, and their fears. And Spirit is saying that they have to deal with that themselves. It's not being cold and heartless and mean. It's being a kind, caring, compassionate person who upholds their responsibilities, but also knows that inevitably one person's life path is theirs alone to walk. And we cannot keep them from the lessons that they have to learn and the lessons that are engraved on their life path. And so you're going to try and ease the burdens. It, the Ella Wheeler Wilcox poem, Lifters and Leaners, comes in. The fact that she defines the whole world as, you know, divided into two people, the people who lift and the people who lean. And she says, for every ten lifters, for every ten leaners, there's one person who lifts. And that's going to be very true here. And it is moving you forward to an idea of things, an idea of almost the more and the more that you give, the more and the more that people will expect. And so here, it is standing in your knowledge and your truth, putting down the weight that you have been carrying and seeing how it is that you want to cultivate and how you want to embrace your life, how you want to put things together and focusing on your greater picture for your future and for your truth. It then leads you to the essence of yourself because you're embracing your passion, your beauty, and the way that you want to wake up in the morning, what you want to wake up for. And this is saying here that we can be easily chained to the expectations of others. And we can be. We can be easily be chained to the expectations of the world. And so here, with the, with the devil card, with you in the major arcana, you are seeing that through the chaos is your truth. Because I see the devil card as very much embracing this earthly plane. And Capricorn, you are the person who can do this earthly dance so absolutely fantastically that it takes the breath away. It's a piece of art. The way that you weave and dip and move through, through this existence. The way that you can understand what is expected and kind of see the nuances of the game. When the rhythm picks up and when it slows and move your soul and body in accordance. So this is absolutely beautiful. But with the devil energy, okay, it tells us not to be caught up in the addictions of this world. Because as you can move with the rhythm of this existence so exquisitely, you could also be caught up in it. And I'm just seeing red shoes and it's that, yeah, it's that nursery rhyme not the mystery rhyme, but it's that, you know, Brothers Grimm stories of red shoes where she just couldn't stop dancing and it exhausts her. 
And so here, as you're looking at things, it's not being as caught up or seduced by, by this world as, as you can be. And it is standing in your truth and in your knowledge. And as you do so, knowing that, yes, you're facing karmic debts and you are facing doubts and fears and that it will make you worry at times, but it will never stop you. There is a brilliance to you. You're looking at the addictions of the world, which are social pressures, you know, drugs and alcohol and gambling, also food and sex and shopping and everything else that brings instantaneous highs of serotonin. And you're saying, no, I want the high of living. I want the joy of the expression of myself. I want the beauty of my soul. And that's what I'm moving forward in. And that's what I'm moving towards. And as you move towards this and as you embrace this, you embrace your truth. And this is also talking about the addictions that we do not categorize. These are the things that take away from the quality of our life. It is believing that our opinion doesn't matter. It's swallowing our words. It's anxiety and self-doubt and people-pleasing and a myriad of things that make us feel less than. During this time, it is not feeling less than, but feeling more than, feeling empowered, feeling invigorated, feeling emboldened that you are embracing. And it moves you to the Two of Cups. It moves you to love. It moves you to a healing that is sublime. It moves you to a sense of drinking deeply of the blessings that are given to you. This is the Minor Arcana Lover's card, and it primes you for the Major Arcana Lover's card that is right here over your heart. You are moving towards what you love. You are moving towards what you desire. You are moving towards a duality of life that you at one time thought was unobtainable. And this is when the playing field gets leveled. This is when you see things more deeply, more honestly, and more truthfully within yourself. You're embracing what you love. Now the lover's card and the minor kind of lover's card can definitely mean that love is coming into your life or that the love that you share with others is enhancing but it also means that you are falling in love. You are falling in love with your life, yourself, your soul, your purpose. You're seeing what is deeper. And instead of being overwhelmed by it, instead of thinking, oh, that's not for me, you're saying, why not? Why can't this be my path? Why can't I live my happiness, my truth, my beauty, my acceptance, myself? And that opens up your world to the practical and the blissful, to the hopes and the dreams and the aspirations and the pragmatic and the steady. And it intertwines you with sensuality and expression. It leads you to the eight of pentacles, hard work, dedication, creation, cult sculpting and crafting. It leads to time and effort put in that might at one time seemed impossible. It leads you to a strength you didn't know you had, with a dedication and a purpose you at one time thought of giving up on. It leads you to a deeper, deeper understanding of yourself. And as you move forward, as you release the burdens that you have been carrying, and you embrace the truth that you want, it sets you free. It has you see things differently. It has you see that all the time and all the effort, it wasn't for naught. It was worth something, and it was worth something beautiful. It leads you then to the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords is a karmic debt being paid, is a truth being seen, is a sense of standing your ground when your knees wobble and your legs shake, and you think, I can't do this. When it's overwhelming and hard and just too much. With the Five of Swords, you look at things and you stand your ground in your truth. And people might say, oh, you're being a bully. You know, give that person back their swords. But here's the thing. Why would you give somebody the weapon to stab you in the back with? In medieval times, if you were to give a person back their swords after you defeated them, the whole world would laugh. There would be no understanding as to why. The fact that you let them go with their lives was considered generous beyond measure. The fact that you wouldn't take what was rightfully yours would be considered foolish. 
And that is part of the truth. Right here and right now, there is a sense of compassion that has made you doubt yourself. It's like you want to do the right thing. You want to do the nice thing. But you have to stand in your truth. You have to stand in in the honor and in the, the power of your mind and your heart. And so as you come together with this karmic debt, and again, it can be from past lives or it can be from a DNA debt. It's kind of like, oh, we're always like this. You know, my family always has to deal with this. It's always a hardship. It's always, you know, we're never taken seriously. We always have to work twice as hard as everybody else. And you're seeing that you're shattering that idea. You're shattering that idea by embracing your essence, your truth, your passion, your power, your brilliance, your understanding. And you're standing in that power saying, I will never again walk away from me. And if I do, if I turn my back on who I truly am, I will see it and I will come back to the essence of myself. It leads you and it leads your heart to a balance that runs deep. It leads you to an emotional abundance that is passed from cup to cup that guides you and leads you forward, that expands your world and embraces the duality of your heart, your soul, and yourself that we see in the lover's card. And as you embrace this and as you look at this, you set yourself free. As you move forward, you see the balance that you have been longing for. Now this is a time frame of November 22nd to December 21st. And this is a time frame that shows you things so much more clearly than you had seen them before. And it's for you, it's not for anybody else. This is also a sense that as you embrace this love, the two cups will always be filled by each other, always be filled by that healing, compassion, brilliance that is a part of you. And as you move forward in this healing, compassionate brilliance, you start to see things changing. And it becomes overwhelming, it does. But this is divinity saying, ready or not, here it comes. It will not slow down. It cannot stop. And here you see things moving forward in a speed that takes your breath away, but in a way that you've been hoping for for quite some time. You embrace the more. You embrace the deeper reasons. You embrace the deeper understandings. You embrace your deeper truth. And you move forward in that passionate power. This is your reason for being. This is what takes your breath away. And it ignites your soul and it excites your heart. And it leads you here to the hermit. And I do love the eight going into the nine. And the hermit with this dragon protecting his gold. It is you protecting that which is the most dear to you. It doesn't have to be that anybody else sees it as a fortune. But the thing with dragons and part of their myth is that they honor what is most valuable to us, what we see as the greatest sacrifice to give. And that's what you're honoring within yourself. You're seeing that passionate power. You're seeing what life demands of us. And you're honoring that and you're holding it dear to you. You're protecting that which is priceless, and it's guiding you forward. It is that light, it is that shining reverence of being, it is that enchantment that guides you. And as you are guided, you're guided by your soul's truth. What you know is worth more than any of the gold in this world. What you know is your passionate wealth and your powerful existence. It leads you then to the Nine of Swords, as you see things so clearly, it becomes overwhelming. And I love how in this line you have eight, nine, and nine. Well, eight, eight, nine, and ten. There we go. Because you have nine and nine right here. And it's as you work hard, you protect that which is yours. And as you protect that which is yours, you put down the burdens that you have been carrying. And you embrace the beauty and the barn fire of passionate creation that you have wanted to have for so long. And it leads you to the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords is worry, doubt, and fear. So as you see things so clearly, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to mess everything up. It's that sense of waiting for the next shoe to drop. It's that sense of waiting for things 
to fall back into the rut that they once had. Now, this does not mean that you will not have setbacks. This does not mean that you will not worry, doubt, and fear. What it does mean is that you will be aware of it, right? Because this is part of a karmic debt that you are carrying. The fact that when things start to go well, you start to worry. But isn't that how it works for us as human beings? As things start to go really well, we start to imagine and see all the different ways that it can fall apart. This is not giving in to that worry, because here's the thing with worry. As above, so below. As you think it, so it becomes. And if you worry, if you doubt, if you fear, if you see that as your existence, it becomes your existence. It's what guides you forward. And it will always be something that you are battling, something that you are working against. And you don't have time for that anymore. It's looking at the worry and it's saying, I acknowledge you. I see that you're there, but you don't get to rule my life the way you once did. To rob my sleep, to deny my happiness. No. Because you have God, source, spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift of passionate creativity, handing you a gift that ignites your soul and leads you forward. And you are most definitely taking it. Now the Queen of Wands, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. You have a strong Sagittarius presence here. With the Queen of Wands, this is the Queen of Action, the Queen who is not afraid to roll up her sleeves and get her hands dirty, the Queen that is not afraid to spring forward and do what needs to be done. And this is you during this time. You see things. You see what holds you back and what you desire. You see so truthfully, so honestly, so passionately, so brilliantly. And you want to be in the midst of it all. Maybe not in the nitty-gritty, angry way. And if the anger does come forward, that is going to be something, Capricorn, that really does repel you. It is going to be repellent. But you want to be able to see the way things move forward, the connections things have, the way that you move in prosperity and success and bounty, and your passion for that. It does not mean that everything goes according to plan. It can be 1% better. Each day, each moment, if we increase 1% every day, that's 365% in a year. And if we keep on increasing 365% or even a fraction of that, we increase leaps and bounds from who we once were to the person that we want to be, to the way that we want to move forward, not for the oohs and ahs of anybody else, but for the simple success of our souls, for the passionate power of ourselves. And with the Queen of Wands, you see that freedom coming forward to you. You see that passion guiding you. You see that light being taken. And you see this becoming a consuming part of your existence, to have your light shine, to have your passion move you forward, to live in your brilliance. Let's go deeper. Show me more deeply for Capricorn, August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn. Show me more deeply for Capricorn, August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn. Show me more deeply for Capricorn, August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Ooh, fantastic. And let's see the people you have to be mindful of during this time. Capricorn, August 16th to the 31st. 2020 Capricorn. Who are the people Capricorn has to be mindful of? August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn. Who are the people Capricorn has to be mindful of? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. All right, these four. I like it when you have the equal number of people who aid and to be mindful of. So we have the Prince of Cups. This is someone 
This is a water sign energy, a Pisces, a Scorpio, a Cancer. This is someone, mostly a likely masculine energy, or it can be masculine or just have a very masculine energy about them. This is somebody who believes that their emotions and their feelings are more important than anybody else's. They move slowly and steadily, but they aren't moving in the direction that they want to be in, and they're letting everybody know it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have the Princess of Cups. This is the same thing, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. This is the feminine energy of the Prince of Cups. And this is somebody who wishes and hopes, but never does. This is somebody who wants things to change and who can go hysterical when things just don't go their way, but doesn't put any effort into it. This is drama right here. The Prince of Cups, also drama, but in a more kind of physical way, this is the person who could just hysterical cry at the drop of a hat. And this is energy that you just do not need to be involved with. And then we have the death card. This is Scorpio energy, October 23rd to November 21st. And now you have a good Scorpio energy here, and you have a bad Scorpio energy. This is somebody who is very secretive, who doesn't want to share with you. They just don't. They don't want to share with anyone. And this is somebody who is going to make you feel less than because they're not sharing what is they truly need to or what you truly need from them. But they right now, they need to kind of be left alone and to move forward in their way and in their path and in their understanding. So this is just, this is just really frustrating energy is what I'm seeing here. And then we have the chariot. It's very interesting. You have all water sign energy to be mindful of. This is this is somebody who charges forward with love and who really isn't thinking things through and they're being a bit reckless and that's driving you crazy. These are all people who just delve way too much into the trauma drama of, of life and emotions. And this is just energy that you don't need to be a part of. Your inner self, we have the three of coins, the nine of cups, and the five of cups. Then we have the Two of Swords, the Knight of Clubs, the Knight of Wands, and the Sun card. It's beautiful. Then we have the Wheel of Fortune, again, the Lovers, and now you have a positive chariot energy. A Cancer, once again, June 21st to July 22nd is the time frame. We start here with the Three of Coins. There is a beautiful cultivation of your talents and your passion that is coming forward. Somebody else will try to take care of credit for this. Will try to say, this is how I wanted you to create it. And this is what I, you know, kind of ordered from you. But it is all you. It is all the creation of your hands, your soul, your, your intuition, your power. And this is, yes, taking in kind of the advice or the lead of others. Not the lead, but the words of others. They think that they are leading things, but the way you put it together is so much more than they have given you. And you need to know that because there's somebody here who's trying to take credit for things and it just doesn't fit. So as you move forward in this knowledge of your ability to create and cultivate and this beautiful arching wealth around you, it leads you to the Nine of Cups. It leads you to a beauty that you are really seeing within you. But that is going to be easier for other people to see first. But because this is your inner self, you're beginning to have an inkling. It's like, wow, do I have a talent to me that I'm being too hard on myself and not seeing? Am I diving as deeply as I want to? Am I looking as th at things as truthfully? And when you see that there's a beauty and a richness to you, where you might be pushing yourself further and further and further, but you're realizing, no, it's kind of like, enjoy this knowledge, enjoy this understanding now, and stop taking away from this moment, because this is beautiful and this is powerful, and this is me. And so as you are embracing this, and as you are embracing that there is more to you than you've realized, and there is a greater passion to you than you've seen before, and you're paying homage to that. And you are seeing a truth 
of your soul and of yourself and you're seeing your essence so much more clearly. It leads you to the Five of Cups. It leads you to changing your mind and changing your life and seeing that yes, two cups may very well be, three cups may very well be overturned, but you have the Minor Arcana Lover's card, the Two of Cups still standing and you are embracing that love, that passion, that depth, that brilliance and you're changing your mind and you're changing your whole entire life. And as you do so, a pathway opens within your mind. And you see two very distinct ways of moving forward, be it you're not too fond of either one of them. And as you see these two ways, and as you look at you and you turn inward and you see what it is that you want and where it is that you want to be, and you kind of say, divinity has a greater plan. Divinity takes care. And as I work hard and embrace what I love, options will open to me that I had never dreamed of seeing before. I had never thought could be mine. And it does open. And you start seeing pathways that you had never imagined. Becoming yours, becoming clear, becoming the way that you want to walk. Not a path that you say, okay, fine, I can be resolved to this. This is not simply existing. Your emotional self, your soul, your heart does not want to just exist. It wants to thrive. And this is you embracing mentally, logically, brilliantly, thriving within your emotional self, that communication between your heart and your mind. Because we are emotional beings. And as emotional beings, we need to have our minds checking with our hearts. We cannot let our logical self or our emotional self take over. We have to have them balanced with each other. Because it moves us from chaos to a sense of serenity, a sense of beauty, and the impact of bliss. And as you move forward with a bliss, meaning your soul's purpose, as you move forward with the sense of being entitled to smile, being entitled to enjoy your life, being entitled to have beauty become and be a part of you, it leads you to the night of clubs, the night of wands, fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. It leads you to moving forward with speed and dedication. This is the second fastest night. And as you are embracing this, as you are embracing this energy, you are embracing yourself moving forward to where it is that you want to be, to what it is that you desire. And it's working hard. It's, yes, having setbacks at times. And it's still getting up, dusting yourself off, and keep on going. It's looking at the great expanse of your passionate self and where you want to be. And it's saying, I'm moving forward in this truth. I'm moving forward in this blessing. I'm moving forward in me. And as you do this, and as you see your light, your love, yourself, your power, you have the happiest card in the whole entire deck come before you. You have the sun. This is a radiance. This is a warmth. This is a brilliance that shines from you, that embraces your heart and embraces your soul and moves you forward in passionate power. This is you. This is you being happy with your emotional and wonderful self. This is you sitting there and saying, I see it. I embrace it. I understand it. And it might not be every moment of every day. And most likely it will not be. But it's this radiant happiness that comes over you. A moment a day. Maybe for days at a time. And it's, this is what it's worth it. This is what makes it worth it. This is why it's worth it. This is what guides you. And when people see the sun shining through, and they will, and especially when it's shining through in your emotional self, in the place of your heart, in the passion of your soul, they're going to get jealous. So just be mindful. Be mindful of those who take you by eyes. Be mindful of the sense of moving forward towards something greater and people saying, why not me? And do not let them steal this energy from you. Do not let them jinx you. You don't let them sit there and be emotional vampires because they're going to want to be. Some of them are going to want to take advantage. You need to stand your ground and know that you deserve this. You deserve this beauty, this radiance, this love, this light, this happiness. And with knowing and embracing the fact that you deserve this, it changes the game for you. You embrace the wheel of fortune. You see a new season coming in. You see the tides turning. You see yourself moving forward and saying, yeah, 
This is a whole new cycle. This is a whole new me. This is me stepping into an aspect of myself that I've ignored before, that I denied. And now as I step into it, I know my truth. And yes, the world forever changes. All is fluxed and nothing stays the same. Plato said it. And it still remains true. But you are embracing that change. And at times, yes, it will feel like you're on a roller coaster ride. The highs, the lows, the lefts, the rights. But you will not be held back. And you are embracing that change because, and you are embracing those highs and those lows because it gives you such invaluable insight and such exquisite connection that bring, brings you to your inner strength, that has you breaking out of a shell. And it embraces what you love, what you long for, what you've cherished, what you desire, what calls to your heart, to your soul, yourself. And there is no longer fear here, but vast determination to move forward in it. Vast determination to say, I am moving towards this greatness, towards this glory, towards this understanding, towards me. I will not be held back. I am moving forward in my natural progression to find my love, my lovers, and to move forward with the chariot in the power and the ferocity of the heart, in the expanse and the depth of the spirit, and to not let others stand in my way. I am daring and I am bold. I am courageous and I am beautiful. And I am willing to take the risk on me, to move to the place that I was meant to be, that I was born to be, in my truth and in my joy. Will I stumble? Yes. Will you fall at times? Yes. But you are still moving forward to something so exquisite, it takes your breath away. Let's see what your spirit animal has to say. Hmm. Capricorn. August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn. August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn. August 16th to the 31st, 2020 Capricorn. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Oh, fantastic. You have three. That's beautiful. So we start off here with the cat spirit. Claim your independence. Seriously, Capricorn, claim your independence. Move forward in the passion and the beauty of yourself, your knowledge, your truth, and what you desire. And don't be afraid to go against the crowd or to be, to be wild and wacky and just completely you. There's a poem that I have loved since I was nine years old. And a part of it goes, so what if I'm different and don't act like them? I'm not going to change and be someone I'm not. I like who I am and I'm all that I've got. And that's what you're doing here. You're embracing your independence, your uniqueness, yourself. And you're loving every minute of it. Or at least rejoicing in it, in the uniqueness and in the power that it brings you. Even though at times it can make you feel isolated because you're not like everybody else. And here's a little secret, Capricorn. You don't really want to be. It then leads you to the fox spirit. Think on your feet. Because so much is changing here. So much is moving you forward. Think on your feet. Think of it as a game. Think of it as a contest. And you're winning. You really are. It then leads you to the rabbit spirit. Now is your lucky time. And it really is. To move forward in what you love and desire to have this brilliance and beauty be a part of you and to embrace it in a way that lets your luck shine through, that lets the sun shine through as you embrace the very essence of your being and the very depth of your soul. It is no longer being afraid. It is standing in confidence and saying, this is me. This is exactly who I want to be. Even if you think, my gosh, this needs tweaking, it's like, yeah, okay. You can tweak, most definitely. But there is a pride and there is a brilliance to the uniqueness that is you and the passionate beauty that is you. 
your subconscious message for your spirit animals is the dove spirit be peace embrace calm serenity as you move forward and be the peace that you want to see in the world be that loving healing light because Lord knows we need a lot of it and with your people your subconscious message is the hermit Virgo energy this is you turning inward this is this being a very private very intensely beautiful time for you as you let your light as you let your yourself shine forward as you embrace what you love and as you look at what you want more deeply you let your wishes guide you you let your desires guide you not in a way of being hedonistic but in a way of being completely and utterly you saying this is what I want for myself this is what I want for myself and this is what I desire for my world and my existence and it's the highest form of your perfection that is guiding you forward that is moving you towards something bigger and you're up for the adventure You can feel, feel weather beaten along the way, as if you've been on this journey for quite a time, and you have been. But the wisdom comes, the power comes, embrace it. It comes on the whispers of the wind, it comes in the beating of our hearts, it comes where we don't think to look, and it comes in the loudness and the noise of this world. But if we are quiet enough, and if we are connected enough, we hear. It's time to listen. And then we have your chakra energy, your subconscious chakra energy. It is inspiration. This is the sacral chakra. This is where a lot of negativity from this life and past lives are held. This is you being set free. This is you being inspired. This is you looking at trauma and drama from past lives handed down from your DNA line and saying no more. And you might say, how do I know the trauma and drama from a past life? It's when things hit you. It's when things kind of take your breath away, and not in the good way, and you don't know why. It's when we have innate fears, and those are from past lives. And as you move forward in inspiration, as you move forward, letting yourself be inspired by the little things, by a sunrise or a sunset, by children's laughter, by a hummingbird, or just the song of birds singing outside of your window, by a million little things that we overlook, you find yourself moving in the grace of inspiration and inspiration building around you. It leads you to the subconscious tarot message. to the king of wands and I adore this whenever I have the king and the queen of the same suit from the same deck this is a soulmate connection this is a true love connection and this is what you are embracing you're embracing your love and your soulmate power of passion of creativity of inspiration of desire to move forward this is a time where you feel inspired and where you walk in footsteps of inspiration meaning the trail you leave behind you flames just a bit. There's a depth to you and there's a beauty to you that you need to embrace. Now this could be romantic love coming forward, most definitely. But this is also you being in love with your life, your soul, yourself. Seeing things more deeply and more honestly and more truthfully and seeing things coated with a bit of beauty and magic. And the magic being that the gods had is hidden within you. And that is the one place we never look. It is looking within and seeing the fact that stardust runs through your veins and you are part of this universe in a way that is absolutely awing. To go deeper in this subconscious message, it brings you to the page of coins. It brings you to you as a student. 
of your passion, of your prosperity, of what you want to plant within your world and what you want to grow and harvest for your bounty and for your beauty. You're learning so much during this time and you're taking so much in that you will not be the same when this time ends. You'll be wiser and richer and deeper because of it. All right, Capricorn, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we move forward in peace and contentment. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace, Capricorn.